If there is one thing I love in the world of cinema, it's seeing actors debut their first ever directorial film. And the reason why I love this is because it can literally be a hit or miss. In this case, this movie is not a hit. But it sure is a knockout. Y'all like that knockout joke, didn't y'all? Listen, 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 please, I'm here all night, folks. I'm here all night. Hold your applause, please, please. So Creed 3 is the third installment in the Creed trilogy, and I also believe it is the ninth installment in the Rocky saga, if you will, if that's what we're calling it. The film is directed by and stars Michael B. Jordan, along with the supporting cast of Tessa Thompson, Wood Harris, and Jonathan Majors. Creed 3 takes place after the events of Creed 2. Adonis Creed has retired from boxing and is spending time with his family. But when Damien, a childhood friend of Adonis, resurfaces after serving time in prison, he is eager to prove that he deserves a shot in the ring. And as tensions begin to rise, Adonis must put his future on the line to battle Damien. Now listen, I promise you this channel will not turn into a Jonathan Majors fan page. But is there anything this man cannot do? Like, whenever he is on screen, he, you feel his presence. You can sense his charisma. You feel his emotion. Even when he's not talking, let's say it's just all face, all facial emotion. You can sense it. You can feel it. And you know exactly how he is feeling in that moment. I have never in my life seen an actor display six different emotions in under 10 seconds without saying a word. Now, listen, I may be over exaggerating a little bit like there are other actors who are really good at displaying emotion, especially multiple different emotions without saying a word. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Jonathan Majors. Now, alongside with Jonathan Majors' performance, I gotta say, I do like Damien as a character. And let me tell you why. Damien is this hardened, charismatic, yet broken man. This guy lost his shot to glory at such a young age. And for him to be locked up for almost two decades? Oh yeah. He's pissed, he's angry, he has it out for the world, and he is just willing to do whatever it takes to retain that glory. Now, I do like characters like this because it's one of those situations where it's like, okay, I get why you are doing for what you are doing. Here's why you are wrong for what you are doing, hence why you are doing it. I don't know what it is. I always find characters like that to be fascinating. Speaking of fascinating... Those fight scenes were top tier. The fight scenes in this film are just incredible. This is some of the most immersive and well choreographed fight sequences I have seen in a boxing film or any sports film in quite a while. I saw an article headline not too long ago about how the boxing sequences were all heavily anime inspired. And while watching this movie, I can confirm that those sequences were definitely anime inspired. Everything from the punches to the dodging to the slow motion analyzation of the opponent's weak points to literally looking at the sweat profusely drip off the opponent's face in slow motion. It definitely has all the anime aspects of it. And I gotta give props to Michael B. Jordan for that because I thought he did a really good job with using anime as a foundation for these boxing sequences. Fun fact, all of the boxing sequences in this film were filmed with real IMAX cameras. So when I saw this movie in IMAX, it really enhanced my immersive experience even more. So if you plan on seeing this movie, Please go see it in IMAX. It is worth it. I promise you. Also, I want to give props to the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack in this film was really good. All of the Creed films have all had a great soundtrack, but I really, really enjoyed this one in particular. So whoever did the soundtrack, shout out to you. I do wish this film was longer though. Compared to Creed 1 and 2, this one is definitely the shortest. I don't know why. Who knows? Maybe they had to cut it out due to budget or... Studio guidelines, I, I don't know. But when this movie does get released on DVD and streaming, I hope there's a Michael B. Jordan director's cut because I would like to see it. I want to see Michael B. Jordan's full vision. Now, as you may have heard, Sylvester Stallone is not present in Creed 3. However, that does not ruin the magic of Creed 3. Throughout the entire time while I was watching this, I did not think to myself, you know what, this movie would be a lot better if Rocky Babo was in it. No, no, I didn't think that. I didn't think that not once. I thought this movie worked well without Rocky. And given the context of the story, I don't know how Rocky would have even fit into this film. I feel like he kind of would have been there just to be there because he's Rocky. And maybe they didn't want to do that with that approach. I don't know why Sylvester Stallone 
wasn't in the film exactly. I didn't do enough research to really see as to why. But in my opinion, it worked out. So, hey, there you go. In the end, Creed 3 is a very exceptional film. Not only from the standpoint of being the third installment of the Creed series, or Creed trilogy, I should say, but also being an installment of the Rocky saga and actually blending well in this universe, and I appreciate that. So plugging Creed 3 into the rank system, I am definitely putting this one in the pinnacle zone. I truly think this is by far one of the best films of the year, and we have many, many more months to go. But even if this film doesn't make it on my top 10 list, it is definitely, without a doubt, gonna be on my honorable mention. Also, for those who may be wondering, I actually got this robe off Amazon a couple of days ago, and I figure I wear it in the video because one, it's comfortable, and two, I feel like it kind of fits the tone of what this review is. I mean, it's a boxing movie. You know how boxers come down the aisle with the robes on. I figure, hey, why not? But yeah, guys, that'll pretty much do my review for Creed 3. If you guys enjoyed the video, please, as always, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications for when the next review is up, and let me know in the comments what you thought of Creed 3, if you've seen it already. Did you hate it? Did you love it? Do you think it's the best one in the trilogy? Would you put this one over any of the other Rocky movies? Or have you never seen any of the Rocky movies for some strange apparent reason? Let me know down in the comment section below, and I will see you all in the next one. After working up the nerve, almost equal in size I walked around with the iron for any wrinkle in time I paid a piece of my mind for every nickel and dime But never less than a five and never slept on a job A killer trapped on your squad yet never left the garage Where your God was close enough to see the flesh of his eyes Get to the button and press it's what the message advised What's the threat behind the message where the testament lies?